Greetings, my name is Kerry and welcome back to my channel. Today I have my December stats wrap up for you, my final stats wrap up of 2022. And actually I think the only one that you're gonna see as a standalone month, but never mind. Let's get on with it. So I read 12 books in December, which is pretty good. That's kind of about the average I had for the year. I read 115 books in total, so not quite 10 a month. So yeah, slightly above average then. The shortest book that I read or that I finished was Leading Lessons by Jean Porter at 132 pages. The longest book that I finished was Plain Bad Heroines by Emily M. Danforth at 623 pages. The total number of pages in the books that I finished in December was 3,583, which gave me an average book length of just under 300 pages, 299 pages. So that's pretty good, actually. Again, about average number of pages I read in that month. There was one book which was Plain Bad Heroines, which was over 500 pages. All the others were under 500 pages. Budget is restarting from my January wrap up, and I'll explain all about that in my goals for 2023 video about about what is happening with my budget and how I'm tweaking it a little bit. So we're not going to go into that. The book that I read that was written first or published first was The Story of Mary MacLean by herself, which was first published in 1902. And then the book that I read that was published most recently was The Reading List by Sarah Anita Adams, which was published in 2021. In terms of ratings, I gave one book two and a half stars, one book three stars, two books three and a half stars, four books four stars, one book four and a half stars, and three books five stars. The book that took me the longest to read was Sweets by Tim Richardson, which took 95 days. And then there were two books that I read within a couple of days, one of which was The Reading List, and the other one was Lullaby by Leila Slimani. So that gave me an average reading length of 24 days. The book that had been on my TBR the longest was Sweets by Tim Richardson, which had been on there for 2,909 days. It was one of the oldest books on my TBR, so really good to get that one read. And then the book that had been on my TBR, the shortest, was one that I had to read for a seminar at uni, which was The Holy Spirit and Christian Experience by Simeon Zahl, which I started reading right away because I was reading it for a seminar. So that gave me an average length on my TBR of 463 days, which isn't too bad across all the books. I like that to be less than a year, <laughs> which it clearly wasn't, but eh, only 100 days over is not too bad. Okay, where the books came from? Two books were from my physical backlist, one was from my digital backlist, five of the books were new ones that I obtained within the year last year, three books were borrowed from the library, and one book was a reread. The types of books, there were 10 paperbacks, one hardback and one ebook. In terms of the audience, there was one young adult book and the other books were all for an adult audience. The genres, there were four Christian non-fiction, two contemporaries, one gothic horror, one memoir, one mystery, one non-fiction, one speculative fiction and one thriller. So for publishers, five of the books were from big five publishers and the other seven were from independent publishers. Author nationalities, there were three African American, four American, three British, one British Indian, one French Moroccan. So for author ethnicities, five of the authors were from marginalised ethnicities and seven were white authors. Author genders, three of the books were from cisgendered men and nine were from cisgendered women. So for my author diversity, five of the books were from authors from marginalised ethnicities, two authors are part of the LGBTQ QIA plus community. One book was from an author with a disability. And then for character diversities, I hit all of the markers apart from neurodivergence. So four books featured characters and marginalised ethnicities. Three books featured LGBTQIA plus characters. Three books featured characters with disabilities. And four books featured characters talking about mental health. And then for my challenges, I did okay-ish. One book was from my subscription box challenge. One book was from the audition on my TBR. And one book completed a series. So okay-ish. I feel like I've gone through those stats really, really quickly. <laughs> so yeah, let's talk quickly about my 
least favourite and my favourite books of the month. So my least favourite was the book obviously I gave two and a half stars to, that was The Story of Mary McLean by herself. I picked this one up because a lot of the action in Plain Bad Heroine centres around this book. It's one of the elements that kicks off all the drama in that book and I really love Plain Bad Heroines and because I was rereading it for Space Sirens I thought it would be fun to parallel read the story of Mary McLean alongside it and while there were aspects of Mary McLean's book that were interesting and certainly did give a good insight into Plain Bad Heroines I just found her a bit of an annoying <laughs> narrator is a memoir and she wrote it when she was I think 19 and it is very much written by a pretentious teenager. Didn't love that one <laughs> but I'm glad to have read it because of the insight it gave into Plain Bad Herons which is a book that I will reread. It's the second time I read it and I enjoyed it just as much as the first time so it's sort of the sort of book I would pick up spooky season every couple of years I, I would guess. And then for my favourite book I'm going to say it was The Reading List by Sarah Nisha Adams. This is one of the three books I gave five stars to. This was just adorable. It follows two protagonists Alicia who is a teenager who has got a holiday job working in a local library but doesn't really want to be there but it is better than being at home would be and Mukesh who recently lost his wife and is trying to understand her love of reading but is a bit intimidated by the library. Alicia finds a list a reading list in a library book that's been returned and to try and escape herself from some of the reality of her life and to try and help Mukesh do the same. They both start reading these books from this list and then talking about them. I think one of the things I really loved about this book, I mean there were quite a lot of things, <laughs> one thing was definitely it's a love letter to reading and I'd read most of the books that were featured on this reading list that the book is centred around which was really lovely to see the characters reacting to these books I really do enjoy myself. The other was the community and how the community by the end of the book really draws together and how reaching out and interacting improves both of these characters lives for the better and I just thought it was really lovely. It's really bittersweet, there's some really sad moments in it but it's just a really cosy book and I really very much enjoyed it. <laughs> I feel like this hasn't been a very long video compared to how long they usually are, but never mind. I'm sure editing Carrie will not be too disappointed that it's not longer because of putting in all of the charts. But never mind. Have a chat to me down in the comments about some of what you read in December and what your best and worst books were. If you just want to let me know that you've been here, leave me a wintry emoji in the comments. You can also like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't already and you can also follow me on social media, all that information is listed for you in the description box below. But that's it for today so thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye!